It's time for some geometric series. I like this one right here. <laughs> 1 over n times sine x. <laughs> Cancel out the ends. Boom, 6. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so we've learned about geometric sequences, which is a list of numbers where there's a common ratio, where you multiply the same number. Uh, well, then a geometric series must just, just be the sum of the terms. So we're just going to define something called, so as long as it's geometric, then we can do the series. All right, we start off with a sequence, a list of numbers, and we want to know the series. Well, then it's just the sum of the terms. We just add them up. And just like for arithmetic uh, series, how we have an equation in our formula book, we also have one for a geometric. All right, so it says a sum of the n terms. So the first, you know, if you want to add up the first n terms, we write as Sn. And now there's actually two different versions of it that you can find. So one of them will be, uh, it's u1 times r to the n, all that minus 1. Uh, i got to watch out, my r almost looks like an, sorry, my n almost looks like an r. I just want to make sure it's clear. There we go. All that divided by, uh, was it, r minus 1. Now we have another version of it, though, just in case you wanted. You can also sort of, it's kind of reversed. Well, it's not reversed, but it's slightly different here. We go uh, one minus r. Same, same. As long as r is not one, because if you make it one, the whole thing falls apart, right? Dividing by one, uh, dividing by zero, sorry, would be bad news. So this right here is the formula we're going to use. Now we don't have to memorize it. Uh, you can just use it. So this right here, let's actually try to actually do something with it. So here we go. We're going to calculate the sum of the first eight terms of this geometric sequence. So blah, 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 blah. here we go. Let's see if we can do it. We'll do as much as we can uh, without a calculator. Let's see what we can do. Well, we first, it helps to write down the equation we're going to use, right? So Sn, I'm just going to rewrite it again. Right? So Sn is just equal to, what is it, uh, u1 times r to the n minus 1, all that over r minus 1. Well, I have to determine then those two things, right? I need to know u1, good news. That's u1, that's easy. And I got to know what r is. Slightly less easy, but let's see. If it's geometric, it means that I should be able to multiply by the same number. A nice little pro tip from before I told you. Take any term and divide it by the term before it. See what you get. All right, well, that gives you minus 1 over 2. Make sure that it works. 5 over negative 10 is also negative 1 over 2. Well, this looks complicated. Minus 5 halves divided by 5 also gives you minus 1 over 2. So I know that r equals minus 1 half. It's nice to know, and I know that u1 equals 20. Yay. I put those into here. I do the substitution, and away I go. So I'm going to do s then of 8. The sum of the first 8 terms It's just going to be, see, the first term, which is 20 times r, which is minus 1 half, all that to the power of 8 minus 1, all that over minus 1 half minus 1. Now you just got to be comfortable with fractions and exponents and see what happens. So let's not freak out. Let's just try to figure this out here. So this would be 20. Now, negative 1 to the power of 8 anything to an even power, the negative disappears. So that's actually kind of nice. It just becomes 1. And 2 over uh, two to the power of 8 is what we need to do here. All that minus 1, right? All that over. Let's see now. What's 1 half minus 1? i got to make a common denominator. So I'll make them both over 2. And this would be 2 over 2. That's the same thing as minus 1. So let's keep going then. So that means I have 20. Let's figure this out. Well, 2 to the power of 8, let's see. That's uh, 2 to the power of... 3 is 8, uh, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64, times 2 is 128, then I got to do 256, so it'll be 1 over 256. Minus, now I got to get a common denominator here as well, so I'll make it 256 over 256, that's the same thing as 1. Phew. Uh, the reason I can do the common denominator down here, at least, don't forget about this one, minus 1 minus 2 is also minus 3 over 2. This is looking a little bit ugly, but it's okay, it's going to get better. Uh, remember what happens when you divide by a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal, so it's going to be minus 2 over 3 times 20. All that time, let's see now, 1 minus 256 will be uh, 255, negative, of course. Ugh. 
So this is actually looking pretty ugly algebraically, isn't it? So uh, 2 times uh, 20 is a minus 40 over 3. This would be my closest approximation to what I feel like doing right now without a calculator. 256, there we go. Well, then let's use our calculator to figure out the rest of it. So uh, what I'm going to do then is uh, just do, uh, well, keep in mind this is going to be a positive number because two negatives uh, multiply to give you a positive. So I'm going to do this here. So I'll do, um, I'll make it nice and pretty here just to show you. So negative 40 over 3 times new fraction minus 255 over 256. So there it goes. It's uh, 525 over 32. Uh, sorry, 425 over 32. Now you could do this here as an approximate. I'll just do command, or sorry, control enter. And that gives me 13.3, let's say to three significant figures. So 13, so approximately 13.3. This is the exact value, actually, this one right here. This one here is the exact value here. But there we go. So although the math might look uglier, the equation, the idea of doing it is just, it's okay. It's just that the math gets a bit more gross. Let's do an even more gross one. I like this one here though. 50% of Roger Federer's name is just Er. And it's actually not even 50%. Whoever did this meme is slightly wrong. If you look at this, Er is, uh, let's see, there's two Er's right here. It's actually more than 50%. But anyway, so harder example. This one looks crazy. There's two ways of doing it. Maybe I'll just separate it into two here. I'll sort of separate it. There's two ways. So um, one way is to just, just do the sum. Remember what this means, right? So let's just open this thing up. So remember what this means. This means add up all the terms, start off at k equals 1, finish at k equals 4. That's what this sigma means. And here's your recipe. So let's actually just try to do this. So if I get k equals 1, what would I get? I would have 3 times 1 third to the power of 1 minus 1. I would have that plus, let's see now, i got to do it to the k equals 2. So 3 times 1 third to the power of 2 minus 1. I'm just trying to show you all the terms here. We're going to simplify in a second here. 3 minus 1 plus, maybe I should move all this right here, just because... Oops, well that one here, minus. I don't know why it didn't come with me. There we go, plus uh, 3 times 1 third. I'm writing really badly. Uh, 4 minus 1. There we go. So let's say we kept going. Now luckily, uh, well, anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So this will just become a 3. This one right here is just 1 third to the power of 1. So that's just 1 third. So 3 times 1 third is 3 over 3, which is just 1. That worked out. Let's see what this right here is. 3 minus 1, that's 2, right? So maybe I'll actually figure this one out. So 3 times, no, 1 to the power of 2, which is still just 1. 3 to the power of 2, which is 9. We'll figure that out in a second here, obviously. We'll just simplify it. Same thing going on here. This is to the power of 3, so we have 1 over 3 to the power of 3, whoops, which is 27. Then if I do this, let's see now, that gives me... 3 over 9, which is 1 third, uh, plus 3 over 27, which is 1 over, and let's see, 27 divided by 3, it's 9. So, I mean, keep in mind what I'm doing, right? I'm just I'm just making everything right here over 9 uh, is what I'm going to have to do here. So I'll make them all over 9. So that would be 27 over 9, wouldn't it? Plus 9 over 9, plus 1 over, whoops, i got to make this one over 9 as well. 3 times 3, so that'll be 3 over 9 plus 1 over 9. What, 27? Oh, let's see, this is 10, 37. This will be 40 over 9, isn't it? So, yeah, good. That should be right. So that would be my answer, and I'm done. Now, that was one way to do it. Do you notice I didn't have to use any sort of geometric um, series ideas? I just opened this thing up. But there's another way. You could actually see it as a series. So C as a geometric. Because can you see it looks like a geometric one? If you look, look at this carefully what we're doing here. What we're doing here, we've got this first term right here. Let's let's recognize what a geometric one looks like. Remember the nth term of a geometric sequence looks like. It's u1 times r to the n minus 1. Well, that's what this looks like. Look, this is u1. U1 would just be 
I'm not sure if you see this. If not, that's okay, but you can skip this part. You can just end the video now. I'm just trying to show you there's another way of seeing it. So you could say that u1, ah, that's 3. We know that r is this next number, so that must be 1 third. And I know that I'm doing the sum of the first, let's see now, I'm doing the sum of the first, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. So I'm doing s4. That's actually what I'm doing. So I could then use that equation and say, all right, well, I'm going to use this you know, generic equation of Sn that we just learned before, right back here, right? Sn is u1 times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. So I'll do that. And I'll end up being hopefully the same thing. Let's see what happens. So if I do this right here, uh, let's see, I put in u1, which is 3. I do r, which is 1 third to the power of n. Well, keep in mind, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing n equals 4 here. I'm doing s4. So I'm doing n equals 4. Huh? I'm going from 1 to 4. So this here would be all to the power of 4, all that minus 1, all that over 1 third minus 1. So let's break this thing here open. So I have s4 then equals... Mm, let's see here. I'll do 1 to the power of 4, which is 1. 3 to the power of 4, let's see, 3 to the power of 3 is 27. That times 3 is 81. All that minus, now I'm supposed to have a 1, but I'll make them both over 81 just for fun here. So I've got 81 over 81. All that over. 1 third minus, I'll make it 3 thirds just to make it work out. Let's see if I can do this right here. So I've got, uh, let's see here now. 1 minus 81, All right, so that there's going to be uh, minus 80 over 81, all that over negative 2 thirds. Remember what happens when I divide by a fraction? I can multiply by the reciprocal, so it'll become times 3 over 2, don't forget the negative, times minus 80 over 81. Well, 3 times 3 is... So although this is really, I mean, it's mathematically kind of ugly, that's why it's harder. But 3 times 3 is minus 9. Let's see here now. Times, yeah, we'll all that over 2, I guess, times minus 80 over 81. Good news, minus times minus gives me a plus, so that's good. Uh, what else can I do? I can do 80 over 2, which is 40. Um, I can divide my 9 and 81, so 9 over 9 gives me uh, just 1, 81 over 9 gives me 9, so that gives me over 9. And hey, I got the same answer as here. So see, although it was, you know, there's a different way of looking at it, but we still get the same answer. 